On today's show, Tesla announces the name of its pickup truck ahead of next week's live reveal event. Details of the Ford Mustang Mark E get leaked online and electric vehicles outsell stick shift manual transmissions in the United States for the first time ever. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech News Roundup show. I've been busy traveling again this week, but luckily for me, even if I'm not in the studio, the news just keeps happening. So there's plenty for us to talk about. It's official. Tesla has begun sending out stylized invites to its Tesla pickup reveal event, which is taking place on Thursday next week, a Friday if you're in New Zealand, and in doing so has finally revealed the name of this long-awaited vehicle. Musk has already hinted that the Cybertruck, yes, that's its name, spelled C-Y-B-R-T-R-K, will look like an armored personnel carrier from the future. And the stylized trademark submitted this week to the Trademark and Patent Office certainly follows in that line. We've got less than a week to wait, though, so we'll know soon enough how this Tesla is really going to look. With production of its ID3 now underway at Zweikau, which I incorrectly identified as being in Lower Saxony last week, Sorry, it's in Saxony, not Lower Saxony. Volkswagen is finding some new and interesting ways to educate customers about its new car. One of them showcasing how the compact and light 150 kilowatt motor of the ID3 really is by putting one in a gym bag. I'm sure many of you already know how much power an electric motor can pack into a small space, but for those new to electric cars, this is certainly a new and novel way to showcase the fact. I bet you can't do that with a V8. We've known for some time that Tesla was on the hunt for a site for its next Gigafactory, and that location has going to be in Europe. But now we know exactly where in Europe, Berlin. Announced midweek by Elon Musk using his favorite method, Twitter, the Gigafactory Berlin will be charged with producing batteries, powertrains and vehicles, with the Tesla Model Y being the first car to roll off the production line when the Gigafactory is built in Berlin. Why Berlin? Well, Germany is known for its engineering prowess and apparently Brexit caused Tesla to give a wide berth to the UK, which at one point was in the running. Ford has officially confirmed that its Mustang-inspired EV, a vehicle due to get its official reveal in LA on November 17th, will be called the Ford Mustang Mark E. The pre-order page for the same was leaked online Thursday and suggests Ford will begin sales from $44,000 pre-incentives in the US. Customers will be able to put down a $500 or equivalent refundable deposit using the Mustang site from Sunday, as soon as the reveal event has finished. Having seen the car myself in the metal, all I can say is, well, um, I can't actually say anything as I'm under embargo until Sunday, but you should totally tune into the reveal. Last year, the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model S lost their Consumer Reports recommended list placement after enough owners in the organization's annual auto reliability survey gave both cars poor ratings. But this year's annual auto reliability survey highlights the hard work that Tesla has been putting into rectifying those problems. And now both cars are back in the recommended list. However, Model X is still marked as one of the least reliable cars in the survey. And that's unfortunately dragging Tesla down in terms of overall brand reliability. Volkswagen has officially broken ground at a brand new expansion to its Chattanooga, Tennessee production facility. This time, it's going to be dedicated exclusively to electric vehicle production. $800 million is being invested in the Chattanooga plant, which will begin producing the Volkswagen ID4 SUV in 2022. Volkswagen says it also plans to build a brand new battery production facility alongside its existing Chattanooga plant in order to supply US-made battery packs to its US market cars. For now, electric vehicles will be made in Tennessee alongside the Atlas SUV and Passat sedan but eventually the factory will become all electric. The 2019 Brown to Green Report, an extensive examination of how the G20 nations are doing when it comes to climate action, has just been published. 
This year's report is pretty stark, however, and shows that G20 nations are not doing anywhere near enough to meet the Paris Climate Accord goals. Canada, France, Japan and the UK were highlighted as doing the most to ban fossil fueled cars. But the report says that we need to collectively ban new fossil fuel sales by 2035 or it's all over. The US came top in one thing, though, the highest transportation emissions per capita. It turns out it's 24 times that of India. Last week, I told you about the range increase given to the 2020 Hyundai Ioniq EV. And this week, as a consequence of that range boost, Hyundai is offering some pretty crazy deals on the shorter range, outgoing 2019 model year cars. Some US dealers are now offering 2019 Ioniq EVs on $109 per month lease deals, with $2,500 due at signing for 10,000 miles per year, for three years. But in other parts of the US, that deal is even crazier, coming in at $79 per month when you've added in local incentives. It may not be the longest range car out there, but at that rate, it's a cracking lease deal. The European Investment Bank might not be the first thing you think of when discussing cleaner, greener transportation. But this week, it made a massive move on promoting just that in a roundabout kind of way. How? By announcing that it will stop funding oil, gas and coal projects by the end of 2021. Its new ban on investing in fossil fuel projects is a year later than some member states had hoped it would be. But if you tie in this with all the other fossil fuel news from recent weeks, I think you can see that the tide is finally turning on fossil fuels. Mercedes-Benz has released its own environmental life cycle report for the EQC electric SUV this week. It's a move that we'd love to see other automakers replicate. It highlights that while the EQC, like any electric vehicle, can have a pretty low emission during its time on the road if it's charged using renewably generated electricity, a large part of its carbon emissions, 51% in fact, occur during the manufacturing process. Benz says it aims to reduce that impact by switching to recycled materials in its vehicles and ensuring its production facilities are carbon neutral by 2022. How can you help lower the footprint? Well, by not switching out your car every few years. And finally, automakers have been saying for years that people don't want to buy electric cars and have been using that justification not to make them. But at the same time, those very same automakers have been quite happily producing manual transmission cars without a squeak of complaint. But this week, we learned that last quarter in the United States, manual transmission sales lagged electric car sales 1.1% to 1.9%. I'll grant that manual transmission hasn't been big in the US for many, many years, say for a few key market areas and, of course, among hardened gas heads. But the next time a car dealer in New Zealand says no one wants an EV, <laughs> you know what to say. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and tell your friends about the show. Go on, give us some love. And if you've got some feedback, well, you can send that our way as well. Make sure that you hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss out on our next episode, including all of our LA Auto Show coverage. And of course, while you've got a browser window open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the change. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand go zero emission long before its 2050 zero emission goals. I'll be back soon with a new episode. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.